Welcome everybody. This week we're going to continue on working on my junk pile 1970 Honda US 90 restoration and this week we're going to tackle the gas tank. I found a rusted out 1974 Honda ATC 90 tank on eBay. Now it was a really rusted out mess that nobody was buying so I figured it would be a perfect candidate for this build. We're going to do some serious chopping and body work to make this guy a thing of beauty in this video and if you're new to my channel this tank restoration video is just one of many videos in my junk pile US 90 Honda build series. I'll leave links to the older videos in the description in the comments below if you want to check out the rest of the fun. But for now, let's dive into this gas tank. The 1974 ATC 90 tank had a really large dent on the top of it. So I started by spot welding a little stud to the lowest spot of the dent and then I popped the dent out with a little slide hammer I picked up at Harbor Freight. And after I got the dent pulled out, I grabbed the cutoff wheel and removed the stud and ground my spot welds down smooth. And I'll smooth this area out with a little bit of body filler later on in the video. The really early US 90 gas tanks had a rectangular recess on the top of the tank where an off-road use only decal went. Now the later tanks didn't have this recess, so I'm going to have to make one. Now my plan is to heat up the top of the tank with a torch just to soften up the metal and then I'm going to cut a piece of scrap metal about the size of the recess needs to be and then I'm going to smack the shape into the top of the tank with a hammer. The rectangular shape didn't turn out completely perfect, but that's nothing I can't fix with a little bit of long strand fiberglass filler. I'll just mix up and lay down the filler on the imperfections, and then I'll block sand everything back to the rectangular shape I'm looking for. And now I'm just laying down a little bit of temporary primer so I can see how my bodywork is going to look once it's painted. And then I'm going to move on to the next major modification we have to do on the tank. The early 1970s ATC gas tanks had these cool little Honda badges that screwed onto the tank. And I'm going to need to figure out a way to make some 6mm threaded mounting holes in the tank. Now that I have everything measured out where I want the Honda badge to go, let's do the naughty and drill some holes in the tank. Hey buddy, how's it going? What you doing? Dude, get off the bike. If you take a <coughs> on that bike, I'm gonna take a <coughs> on your head. Get, 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 get. Check it out. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> Oh, you dirty dog. <laughs> now let's move on to the Honda badge mounting holes that I drilled into the side of the tank. 
My thoughts here are to take some six millimeter high nuts and sand them to a little bit of a cone shape so they'll sit into the holes I just drilled. And after the high nuts were sanded round, I plugged one end of each nut with a six millimeter screw and sealed it up with a little bit of gas welding. Now the sealed end of the high nut is gonna go on the inside of the gas tank and the other end that still has the threads is gonna go on the outside of the gas tank. Yeah, that should work great. Let's take these guys over to the gas tank and get them welded in. Hot, 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 hot. Yeah, this is going to work out great. The six millimeter bolt is threading in nicely. And now while I'm welding up the other three holes, I want to let everybody out there know how much I appreciate everybody who's been subscribing and liking and commenting in all of my videos. I truly hope I'm giving you all some cool ideas or at least giving you a little bit of uh, entertainment value. And if you are receiving value from my videos, I want to ask you again to please return the favor and share my videos with your friends, family, and on social media. Every like, comment, and share that you send my way really does help the channel grow. And if the channel grows, I'll be able to create more and better videos for you in the future. So it's a win-win for everyone. Thanks again for the help. Okay, now that we have all the metal work done, it's time to get dirty and move on to the bodywork. Let's start by removing the rest of the paint from the tank with a Scotch-Brite pad on the Harbor Freight Angle Grinder. Now that the original Honda paint has been turned to dust, I'm going to scuff up the entire tank with some 40 grit sandpaper before I lay down my body filler. The 40 grit scuffs will give the filler some serious teeth to hold on to. Since there are a few dents left in the tank that are about an eighth inch or deeper, I'm going to start out by laying down a coat of long strand fiberglass over the entire tank. Now this long strand fiberglass filler is much stronger than normal polyester filler like Mondo and it's perfect for filling in smaller dents and covering up my welds. Now that I have the fiberglass filler sanded back down, there are still a few imperfections I need to fix. So I'm going to mix up a little cowboy lightweight body filler by blending some Bondo with a little fiberglass resin. Now once I have the Bondo, resin, cream hardener, and liquid hardener all mixed up, I'll give the entire tank a really light skim coat. While I'm laying down my Bondo, some of you might be asking what I did about the rust on the inside of the gas tank. Well, unfortunately, I lost the video of that part, but essentially I filled the tank with vinegar and some nuts and bolts, and I rolled it on this high-tech tank rolling machine like I did on this SL100 tank. And after all the rust was removed from the tank, I lined it with a Pour 15 tank liner just to make sure the tank wasn't going to leak. And sorry for not recording that, but don't worry. I've got a restoration video of some more tanks in the near future, so be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll get you a cool video out really soon.
Now that my filler is sanded down with 400 grit paper, I'm mixing up some polyester filler primer. This stuff is basically liquid bondo and it will let me fill in every last little imperfection in the bodywork. Now it's time to block sand everything perfectly smooth. I'm starting out by dusting the tank with this black guide coat. The guide coat is the key to getting a really smooth finish. When you're block sanding, the guide coat lets you know if you have any low spots, air bubbles, or scratches in your bodywork. And the goal is to sand away all the guide coat without breaking your primer to the filler below. If you're sanding and still see guide coat, you know that's a low spot. If you sand too much and break through your primer into the filler, you know that's a high spot. Sometimes it takes me a couple of rounds of priming and sanding until I get rid of all my highs and lows, but this time I knocked it out of the park in one pass. Might be time to call Robbie Layton. I'm using a single stage urethane paint in this project, and the color I'm using is 1972 Mazda RX3 Earth Green, paint code EU. It's a pretty darn close match to the original Honda Parrot Green that came on the 1970 and 1971 US 90s. This color looks pretty darn hot out in the sun. It kind of reminds me of an old Barracuda or a Roadrunner, but we're still missing some stripes. So let's go inside and grab the vinyl cutter. Now it's time to make some stripes for the tank. And while I'm getting the computer and vinyl cutter set up, I want to tell you about a new channel that I recently found called Southeast Vintage Cycle Rescue. It looks like he just started the channel this year, so there isn't a ton of videos over there yet, but what he has up so far is extremely, extremely good stuff. So if you're into like old ATC 70s and XL 70s and things like that, head over there, leave him some comments on his videos, and let him know some weirdo that rides around old Honda stuff in the woods wearing a Bigfoot costume sent you. You're really going to like his videos. Now back to the graphics. I drew up some stripes on the computer and I'm going to cut them out using some Oracal 651 vinyl. This is the same stuff that automotive manufacturers use for vinyl striping on their cars, so it should work great on the tank. Now I think the original US 90 tanks had the stripes painted on, and I was thinking about using the vinyl cutter to make a stencil so I could paint the stripes on as well, but then I got to thinking, this bike is so far from original at this point, I really don't think it's going to matter if I use stickers instead of paint for the graphics. This is going to look just fine. My US Cutter Vinyl Cutter really is my favorite toy. After everything's done cutting, it's a little time consuming having to weed out the excess vinyl by hand, but the end results sure are worth it. Since the tank isn't a flat surface, I'm going to lay the stickers down using the wet method. I basically just spray the tank with a little Windex, and then I slide the sticker where I want it placed. And after everything is lined up straight, I use a Bondo scraper as a squeegee to squeegee the liquid out from under the stickers. Now this method is a lot easier than trying to put the stickers on dry, because you can line things up perfectly straight, and then you don't end up with any air bubbles in the end. Oh buddy, we're getting close. 
Let's get these Honda badges on, take a step back, and let's have a look at this monstrosity that we created. Well, would you look at that? I think the tank turned out pretty darn nice, but more importantly, what do y'all think of it? Did I totally destroy a 1974 ATC 90 tank, or did I make a work of art, or both maybe? Give me a holler in the comments below and let's talk about it. Let's recap and take a look at what we've done so far. We've got the front and rear fenders built and the tank is ready to rock, but I still got a heck of a lot of work to do. I need to get the rear axle and some other parts over to the zinc plater and have them put some new yellow zinc plating on it. And since the seat hardware was all rusted out on the fender that I bought, in my normal fashion of not listening to anybody and just doing what I want to do and winging it, I'm going to do the seat wrong and just delicately build a full seat pan for the bike from scratch. But we're going to have that fun in some upcoming videos, so be sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss the rest of the build. And in the meantime, help me out and click the like button on your way out. And if you want some more Bigfoot Bikes and Brews videos, I think you're going to love watching one of these two. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.